Hello everyone. Thank you very much, Professor Davidovitz, for having us for the first time already and third time speaking here. And we would like to share our progress during all these years that we discovered geopolymer technology for us. And uh, we're highly believing in this technology as a very uh, progressive and uh, important in many applications. But we prefer applying more than uh, researching. So, and uh, we, today we would like to focus on one of uh, important applications for uh, geopolymer, which is 3D printing. It is where geopolymers can show the best uh, results, I would say. So what is uh, 3D printing today? Uh, in the internet, uh, well, a little bit about construction 3D printing. It's uh, a technology where an extruder is making layers after layers. So you have seen every, everybody, I think, have seen this kind of technology. So it's now gaining more and more popularity in the world of construction. And it's promising to be a very interesting technology for the future because it has a lot of advantages. And uh, you can uh, see uh, very attractive videos in the internet like this one. We have been there at the construction of this house with a 3D printer in Moscow. And uh, yeah, they promise a house in 24 hours for $10,000 and uh, stuff like that. And then you can also see other more, more promising videos with uh, 10 houses in 24 hours and a house in 24 hours for $4,000. So it's getting better and better cheaper. and more, cheaper and cheaper and more and more attractive. And people are bumping us with calls and emails. Oh, could you please? We need uh, affordable houses, uh, millions of houses per year with a 3D printer. And we say, OK, uh, these videos look very promising, but in fact, this is not the real uh, condition of what is happening now. They do not reflect uh, what is... Uh... Now, now we have several prototypes of 3D printers, single machines, which are working, which are working differently, some working better, some working with some problems. But it's like a prototype in automotive industry. You cannot... Uh, with a prototype, you cannot make a serious production at once. So what is the real state for today? Uh, there are several issues in 3D printing, and uh, from the material side, we came from the material side, and we uh, see the problems with mixing and pumping machine. Uh, if you make a mix stick enough to hold the shape when it goes out of the printer, and strong enough to be constructional, not, not just uh, for some design, so that it has enough uh, compressive strength in the end, then you have start facing problem with the pumping. The pump simply cannot be strong enough to pump this mix. It gets stuck inside the machine. You have to stop, you have to clean, you lose time, you lose a lot of money, and you have to have about 10 well-educated engineers just running around the machine to make it work. So it's not 24 hours and it's not uh, some affordable housing for now. It is a, an idea, it will be some time, but for now, uh, the mixing is made manually. If you see that there are some automatic mixing systems hidden in the box, there is a man sitting inside <laughs> checking the mix. <laughs> no, really. <it. laughs> yeah. So now th this is the state of mixing today. You see <laughs> this uh, one video. Uh... I have a lot of practice on this. <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry. Can I go back? So uh, one, one uh, on top is in Irkutsk, one is in Kurgan, uh, another one in, is in Yekaterinburg, all with different 3D printers that we tried with geopolymer. But you see the mixing system <laughs> is always the same. <laughs> yes. And, and we have improved significantly after that because our back cannot stand anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the improvement. Now we have a mix with a, uh, with a rag that holds the mix so you don't have to break your back. <laughs> Yeah, so this is a recent project that we made. We will talk about it later. So there is a definite problem with the concrete mix. To mix, uh, and not only with geopolymer, but also with Portland cement mix. Because the mix for 3D printing is very special. It's not normal concrete that you can make at the concrete batching plant. Forget about it. It cannot be transported to the site. It should be made on site near the printer every time. And uh, so now we have to rethink uh, completely about the pumping system, about the mixing system, about the material side itself. Well, in the material we have resorted, so we have um, had a lot of experience and we made a perfect mix for 3D printer, which is 
with good consistency. Now we are working on the equipment, uh, cooperating with companies that produce equipment because we have to adjust it. it we cannot take the existing solutions. So, and uh, why geopolymer concrete is the best for 3D printing? First of all, the sustainability side. So you know that Portland cement is very bad for ecology. One ton in, uh, of cement it produces one ton of CO2 and it leads to global warming and we face uh, climate change right now. And with geopolymer technology, it is proven that it uh, produces 10 times less CO2 and it requires 10 times less energy to produce. And uh, also it adds some additional properties for applications. It's, you, you, we know, we all know about it, but we don't know what it is from commercial side. For example, if you make a foundation that goes to the ground, usually in Portland cement you have to protect from uh, to make it for waterproof, acid proof, etc. With geopolymer, with right geopolymer, you don't have to make it. So you reduce the scale scope of work that needs to be done, the scope of materials that need to be used, <coughs> and economically wise, if you calculate it rightly, it becomes cost effective. Uh, yeah, and so. If we talk about the mix itself for 3D printing, we made mixes with Portland cement and uh, with geopolymer cement to compare. And uh, cost-wise, geopolymer becomes 20 to 40% cheaper than Portland cement-based mix. Why? Cement, Portland cement is cheaper than geopolymer, but you have to add a lot of chemicals to make it work for 3D printing. So, yeah. Uh, there are several uh, microactive fillers that we also use as aggregates. So aggregates also have to be considered in the geopolymer mix, not only the binder. Some fillers can also improve the uh, compressive strength during the time, not in 28 days, but in 90 days, 180 days, and so on. And for now, there is no serious production of 3D printing. Forget about it. It's not a car industry right now. There are several prototypes, but we are working on it. And there is no complete system yet. So companies uh, who produce 3D printers, they provide 3D printing systems. They have to take uh, existing solutions from pumping, from mixing, which don't ideally correspond to the needs of 3D printing. But we are um, ready to deliver all-in-one solution right now, starting from geopolymer cement, from material side, and including 3D printer and automatic mixing system, which Alex has worked since he has broken his back several years ago. So uh, he worked on this uh, concept of automatic mixing system for 3D printing concrete, not only for geopolymer application, but also for OPC. And this machine is suitable not only for 3D printing application, but for any kind of application making a real scale project, mass production of geopolymer concrete possible and with a big precision of uh, material supply, uh, dosing and big precision of recipe correspondence and also it can automatically adjust the recipe according to the conditions and to what you need to the application that you have. So a lot of recipes can be pre-installed in this machine. This is the principle schematically of how it works. So. It, is, um, uh, based on a, in, it can be based in a container to be mobile, to come on site. And it's pretty simple on this picture, but there is a lot of investigation, of course, in this kind of machine. And very important for 3D printing is that each batch of your material should be precisely the same as the previous one, because otherwise you will have problems with either too fluid consistency or too sticky and it will get stuck in your machine and you will have to change all the pipes and spend a lot of time and money. With this system we can get uh, precisely the same result each time. So. <coughs> Here we have, uh, we want to show you, to share with you a video of our recent project in the f extreme conditions of uh, far north of Russia, which we made uh, in the end of May, but the end of May there is not like, the end of May here, there was still snow lying there, <laughs> so it was not very warm. Siberia, a region with the most severe climate on our planet. Antimansysk is a fast-developing city in the heart of Siberia. Gazpromneft is the biggest Russian oil company. 
the first that began oil extraction in the Arctic Shield, a leader in high-tech oil wells. Gaspreneff aims to be the leading company and implements cutting-edge technologies. In Huntimansisk, an innovation technical center is being built to apply the newest technologies in digital storage systems. It will be the first completely automatic storage in the construction of which the most innovative technologies in construction have been applied. 3D modeling with applying VR and augmented reality. Autonomous air drones have been used to monitor and control the construction process. And construction 3D printing, applying innovative eco-friendly geopolymer concretes. Geopolymer technology reduces CO2 emissions by up to 90% and energy consumption 10 times. The unique properties of Renko geopolymer concrete for construction 3D printing enable the creation of durable waterproof structures resistant to freeze and aggressive substances and corresponding to the highest requirements for fire resistance and strength. Introduction of active fillers makes the whole structure lighter and increases the heating insulation properties. It also strengthens the 3D molecular structure of geopolymer concrete. Renka develops and produces a wide range of products based on geopolymer technology. Renka geopolymer concrete for 3D printing has been proven as an effective sustainable material for any type of climate, from the enormous heat of Dubai to the deep cold of the extreme north. Renka delivers all-in-one solutions for construction 3D printing, robotic mobile 3D printers, suitable for a wide range of climate conditions, automatic mixing and feeding systems for concrete, enabling large-scale projects without highly qualified personnel, sustainable, innovative geopolymer materials and technologies, from developing the recipes to application and production based on local raw materials. Renka, the future is now. So, as you have seen, the reality, the real conditions in uh, the field are a little bit different what, from what you have in the lab. And when you walk in the lab, you have to consider that on site, the conditions might not be so ideal. Like there is sun shining on your material, there is wind, there is rain that will add some water into your mix, and there is the wind with sand that will add some aggregates and sometimes unnecessary aggregates to your mix. So you have to take this all into account. Now I would like to share some achievements that we made in the last two years. We, had, uh, <coughs> we have signed an MOU with Dubai municipality to provide a, local, uh, a material based on local materials for Dubai. This is their requirement. They want to make it 100% based on local materials. And also we have been chosen for Katirva Awards as a winner in the category for materials resources. And uh, also we are in top 100 and top 50 companies. And all these kind of uh, achievements have come to us. We haven't been seeking for them. We had no time for that kind of work. But we are very grateful for this kind of achievements. And now Alex will talk about uh, our future project, which is near. This is Fiamma Rossa, it's a new project that uh, we have made, uh, we are uh, studied with the uh, Politecnico of Bari, with the Professor Giuseppe Falacara, this is, that is uh, the main aspect about uh, stereo autonomy, that is a new technology that permits to model the, the rocks using uh, usually uh, high pressure uh, water. Uh, so they model the rocks like sculpture and they create uh, several um, architectural projects. Uh, he was, uh, he knew me uh, in US and uh, he was interested to, uh, if asking, it is possible to 3D printing some uh, things about uh, his project, his design, and then uh, using geopolymers and uh, to create new material and uh, new um, architectural um, shapes uh, more easy to realize than uh, normal rocks because normal rocks is like uh, a, a paint. If you wrong, you have to take another uh, blocks to uh, to restart. Using 2D printing is uh, easier because uh, he uh, prepare a design and then works. We works on this design. So this is the the, the project that uh, we are we are going to to do at next at next uh, Mises 
uh, with the collaboration with Mises uh, Lab in, in, uh, in Russia, in Moscow, uh, in uh, September. And uh, um, we, fa we, will fa we will promote, we will uh, do the, uh, the, the project div divided in three pieces, and then we assemble, yeah, and uh, we create uh, the, the final object, and then uh, we paint externally. So uh, this is a project uh, uh, quite good to promote uh, 3D printing because uh, uh, for, for him, uh, to, for this professor, it could be very difficult, was, it's very difficult to obtain the same using the traditional stereotonic, stereotonic, stereotonic technology, so using only uh, water pressure because uh, it's a very complex shape. So he need uh, a more fluid uh, drawing uh, to, 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 to realize. And uh, this is the, the project, the, the piece, uh, this is the bottom, and then how to connect them, and uh, the final uh, effect on a, a basement, rigid basement. And so we start from a basement, we, we apply the first piece, the second piece, and the third piece, and then at the end we color our um, speech future is, future is now because uh, this uh, uh, wasn't possible with traditional system until now and uh, we hope this is a basis for future works and we would like to uh, share some <laughs> impressions from last year and we would like to thank uh, express our deep gratitude for Jepolo Marine Institute for supporting our team last year in the Mongol rally that we made which is a charity rally which is aimed to uh, raise awareness about the global warming in the world and uh, it's cooperating with the Cool Earth Foundation so it, it takes it took us about two months in fact to make this rally we went across more than uh, 20 countries. We crossed border for 16 times. And uh, you have to go with a small car, less than 1.2 liters, and uh, preferably old and preferably bad to break as, ma as much as possible in each country. And but we did, of course. Reliable yeah, but enough reliable to reach the end. <laughs> So yeah, and uh, why are we doing this? Uh, this Mongol rally is cooperating with Cool Earth Foundation, which raises funds to protect the rainforests by uh, supporting the local population. If you would like to know more, you can. Uh, <laughs> and yes, and uh, Professor Davidovitz and the Geopolymer Institute has supported us as sponsors and uh, made, us, uh, made it possible for us to go to the finish line. And uh, we, uh, on our way in Tajikistan, we made a jet polymer uh, right at the highest uh, point of our journey at uh, 4,655 uh, 4, meters. The hands were shaken as well as the legs, but we did mix the uh, jet polymer concrete with local aggregates. We, we took the binder with us, of course. <laughs> local aggregates, the dust and the, uh, the stones. <laughs> yes. And so if you go someday to this uh, road, you can see that we have reinforced the basement of this sign <laughs> with geopolymer. Maybe the sign will collapse, but the geopolymer basement will stand forever. <laughs> and then at, the, uh, at Mongolia in Ulan Batar, there is the biggest horse statue in the world of Chengiz Khan. And we made again the geopolymer because it's, uh, it was uh, sad to see that uh, such a monument has uh, such a bad uh, a tile adhesive used for pavement, so we have repaired part of the tiles. <laughs> so, and thank you again for your attention. <laughs>